Okay, hi, I'm just going to catch you up with a couple of uh, matches I've had on this week. It's been a uh, good week, really, fishing-wise. Uh, you can tell the weather's mild all the way during the night. We've got very consistent temperatures, 13, 14, 15 degrees guaranteed during the day. You know, not going cold at night. That's really good for fishing. And I think I've seen in the, what a lot of people are catching on different venues that there's a few fish being caught. I was really uh, honoured, really, to be asked to fish in David Hall's memorial match. Um, I really liked David. Uh, it gave me my chance of writing in Match Fishing magazines 10 years ago. And I've sort of been writing for the, the company ever since. Uh, I was really sad when uh, uh, David lost his battle. And um, I think he was a bit of a pioneer, really, in terms of what angling media is, you know, and, and what it's what it has achieved and I think that it's great that we can have a match to honour him but I know that when I used to speak to him he never really wanted to speak about the magazine or anything like that, I just want to speak about fishing so I think this match was a fitting tribute so we had it at the Glebe and like I say I was really pleased to be asked. Now the Glebe, wow what a place that is. If you haven't been to the Glebe I try your best to get onto the Maver match this qualifiers or something like that. You'd have to be quick though. They're always the first ones to sell out. I know it's members only usually at the Glebe for uh, open matches and what have you. And I can understand why. A lot of commercial fisheries are good, uh, but they're not looked after in the way that the Glebe is. He makes an incredible effort, Roy does, and his team to take out smaller fish. And as a result, the fish really thrive in there. And we on on the match, I drew on lake one, peg five. I was told it's okay. It's not the best area of the lake, but it's good. Uh, so I was looking forward to a few bites. I thought, well, I'll take it my normal commercial approach. Start relatively short, see what's happening, see what I can catch. Uh, so I started on corn, short. Uh, no, I didn't. I started on pellets short, because I always like to start on pellets. Caught a few fish straight away, calf. I thought, this is okay. I was next to Andy Kinder, who was catching one on the feeder pretty much as quick as you can catch one. I decided not to fish the feeder where I was. There was a bit of a tree opposite me, and it looked nasty. Andy had a bit of bare, muddy bank, which looked easier to fish to, and I thought he's going to be very good at that. Probably not going to beat him with the two pegs out of the are. So if I work on the pole, then hopefully that will come good for me. And I caught really well. Changed to corn, which is what I was... Made me think that I started on corn, but I didn't. I did start on pellets. Changed your corn, so I was getting a few skimmers and tench. Um, and I had a really nice match, catching well. And then it came to about two hours to go, and I just stopped catching. I, I could not catch, and Andy came off the feeder. And I was probably £30 ahead of Andy at this point. I've come off the feeder, and he's had a great run on the short pole where I've been fishing. And I could not catch. Now, I don't know if that's because Andy started fishing it, or if... Because I've been fishing it for so long, the fish had just backed off. But I wanted to try and catch some fish down the edge. And on peg five, is it, there's a tree very close to you here. And he's on peg four. And I, I felt a bit boxed in and I couldn't really catch down the edge. And it's a good bit of advice for you, really. Um, I, you know, over and over again, I always I tried to, I tried so hard to make it work down the edge on like a top four. But I never catch that close to me. I never, ever catch when I'm fishing so close to me only odd fish and that's what happened i couldn't catch down there and an hour went by and i put three fish in the net and i was really really disappointed with myself i could see down the lake everybody else literally catching one a bung so i was probably doing fantastically well up until that point and then the last hour came and i caught a few fish and i ended up very disappointed really i thought oh you know i've wasted an hour of the match not it's hard to say not for any fault of my own, but you don't know. The fish stop feeding, what can you do? You, you need to look for them elsewhere. And I just didn't know quick enough what to do. I did recover it for the last hour, which is good. I could have easily sat there for the last two hours and not caught. But when the scales came, 256 pound was my weight. Incredible. I didn't really feel like... I caught well, but I didn't bag. It wasn't solid. It's just a nice stamp of fish. It's nice fishing. Uh, sort of hook a fish, throw five or six bits of corn in, play the fish, land it, throw five or six bits of corn in, put a piece of corn on the hook, go back out, and then work hard to try and catch one off that bait. Um, worked really nicely. But I just couldn't, I like to say that hour cost me 
And he had 265, so he beat him by £9. He beat him by a couple of fish. Um, so I was, like I thought, I was well ahead of him until that, that dodgy period, which was a shame. So well done to him. I also got beat by a pound by somebody, which is typical. And Des Ship won the match with a fantastic £330. Uh, I spoke to Des quite a lot afterwards, and he had a, a nice margin to fish, and he said he, he caught a lot of fish in the last two hours down the margins. Um, so that time when I was sat catching nothing, that really cost me. I think if I'd have had a, a nicer place to go, it would have helped. But you have to fish your peg. Maybe I should have looked to the feeder during that time, had an hour on the feeder and put some fish in the net, just to put something in the net. I'm sure I would have been second in the match then, no doubt. I did win the silverfish pool, which was nice, and it was all good fun. I think there was over £150 raised for the Macmillan uh, Cancer Charity, so it was all good, a good day. Um, then this Friday... One of the competitions that, uh, I don't really know how to describe this competition for me, the Drennan Knockout Cup. Uh, I think it's fantastic. For me, it's probably the the premier, I don't really know how to describe it, individual competition it, as, as a competition for that really gets you excited. Um, a lot of competitions, if they're on section points or one-off winner on the day, you can be very disappointed. At the Drennan Knockout, your objective is to qualify for the next round. That's your objective, okay? Whether you're the last qualifier or you win the match, your objective is to get through to the next round. So it puts a real twist on it. It's different fishing along the way. I've been runner-up in the competition twice, which has hurt me. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, after I was runner-up in 2013, I didn't fish in 2014 and 15 because so the rounds clashed with um, fishing for England, so I couldn't. I couldn't uh, sacrifice that to, to fish the knockout cup. But this year, none of the dates clash, which is great. So it was at Tunnel Barn Farm on Friday. I like Tunnel Barn Farm. I think as commercials go, it's one of the best. Certainly brilliant for big matches. And the talk of the town was, big £60, £70 would probably see you through. Very interesting how they did the qualifying. The top 60 weights in the match qualified for the next round. Such was the thinking that, relatively speaking, at Tunnel Barn, you could catch that £68 from a lot of places. There's always going to be pegs where you're going to struggle. Um, but there was going to be a lot of places where if you fished a good match, you had a chance. So I think that was what the thinking was. Sounded good to me. Exciting. I drew peg two on high pool. Um, nice peg. Nice peg. Uh, I was next to a friend of mine, Ben Townsend. I fished with Ben in 2000 in the England youth team. And then Ben sort of had a little break from fishing for a while. But he's back now and uh, he's had some great results I've been noticing uh, for the last few weeks. So I was, I think he won the match the day before actually. So I knew I was going to be in for a bit of, bit of a battle there. Um, but we had, a, we had a nice day's fishing. I felt, I didn't feel I got it right again. Since I got back from Ireland, I haven't quite got my commercial head on yet. Um, you know, I had, I had some good matches, like I say, but it's not quite there. I felt slow to notice what was going on. I couldn't catch on pellets. Worms were clearly the best bait. I caught well on casters shallow, and I really should have had some worms somewhere, and I didn't. I had them with me, but I didn't feel the need to change because I was catching on casters shallow. I finished up wearing £84, which won my section, which I was really pleased about. Um, and I qualified, I was about 30 or something like that in the match. So I qualified for the next round. You did need a high 60. £68 pound was the lowest qualifying weight. So, um, I, you know, I was delighted to get through. Just seems to me that it's that funny time of the year at the moment. Not quite sure what the fish want. Maybe worms, maybe meat. It doesn't seem to be pellets. This time last year, I fished the Lindone Festival. And I caught on pellets every single day and won the festival. Tomorrow is the start of the Lindone Festival. Um, I really don't think it'll be pellets. Uh, I just can't see it because the fish recently haven't been eating pellets. At the end of the week, I'll keep you updated with what's going on. Probably be pellets every day. So we'll have to see. Um, well, that's it. I've had a, a good couple of matches. I'm through to the next round on the Junkie. I don't really think I can ask much more than that. Lindo Festival next week. Try my best to defend the crown. Cheers. Catch up with you later. Bye.